on to new horizons. Never before had a space probe been sent to the outermost planet of our solar system. NASA's New Horizons project is one of the most up-to-date and is still providing new data today. After examining the Pluto system, the New Horizons spacecraft flew on to the Kuiper Belt. We leave the Earth, the only home we know, to go to the farthest reaches of the cosmos. If you would like to join us on our journey, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. Let us begin our journey through the vastness of the universe. The Space Probe New Horizons Never before had a space probe been sent to the outermost planet of our solar system. But this was to change with New Horizons. Under the slogan, Bringing Light to Frontier Worlds, NASA, together with the Nonprofit Research Institute of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, constructed the research mission. The development, construction, and operation of the space probe is said to have cost around 700 million US dollars to date. After several postponements, the launch date was January 17, 2006, from the Cape Canaveral rocket base in Florida. An Atlas V launch vehicle served as the carrier. The main objectives of the mission are to explore the geological structure, atmosphere, and mapping of Pluto and its largest moon, Charon. After the Pluto mission, New Horizons should continue to fly and study objects in the Kuiper Belt. In this field behind Neptune's orbit, there are dwarf planets, asteroids, and a strange object called Ultima Thule, or Arakoth. New Horizons Journey to Jupiter Whoever travels across the solar system has more to see than just Pluto. Of course, scientists use the mission for further planetary flying visits. Firstly, some corrections had to be made and critical phases had to be overcome. Only after the probe had passed Mars was the high-resolution camera on board activated. On September 4, 2006, at a distance of 291 million kilometers from Earth, the probe was able to take a first pin-sharp image of Jupiter. From January to June 2007, the research mission was devoted exclusively to the gas giant. Over 700 observations and measurements provided a gigantic amount of data about the largest planet in our solar system. Among the absolute highlights are photographs of a volcanic eruption on Jupiter's moon Io, and of lightning at Jupiter's poles. But New Horizons happened upon Jupiter for another reason. A special technique called gravitational support was to ensure that New Horizons got new propulsion. First, the probe was sucked in by the magnetic field of the gas giant and at a critical point was literally thrown away. This effect ensured that the 500-kilogram heavy research station was accelerated by about 14,500 kilometers per hour. This enabled it to reach top speeds of 83,700 kilometers per hour and shortened its journey to Jupiter by several years. The mission continues, Pluto and Charon. Of course, New Horizons also looked at the other outer planets. It passed the orbit of Saturn on June 8, 2008. On March 18, 2011, it flew past Uranus at a distance of 3.1 billion kilometers. It then encountered Neptune on August 25, 2014. And on April 15, 2015, NASA was finally able to publish the first image of the actual target. A still somewhat blurred image showed the dwarf planet Pluto and its largest moon, Charon. But the quality of the pictures should improve soon. Fascinating for the researchers was to see the dwarf planet in its real coloration. The images of New Horizons exceeded those of the Hubble Space Telescope many times over. The dwarf shows itself in a bright ochre, sand, or gold tone. From a distance, the surface seems even. New Horizons came within 12,500 kilometers of Pluto's surface. It provided images of mountains, dunes, the poles, and the thin atmosphere. People on Earth were particularly enchanted by the Pluto heart, 
which later turned out to be a glacier. For the first time, it was possible to see and examine details down to an accuracy of 60 kilometers. Suddenly, mountains with haze and fog were clearly visible. Contrast-enhanced true color images showed reddish-brown patches of Pluto's surface, ice volcanoes, and much more. Upon the frozen surface of Pluto, there could even be oceans of water. What a sensation at the end of the solar system. The atmosphere is filled with methane, as scientists had already suspected. Also, it is freezing cold on Pluto. On the surface, it is about negative 220 degrees Celsius, and in the upper, warmer layers of the atmosphere, about negative 170 degrees Celsius. Researchers at John Hopkins University are still completely baffled by the measured data. Never before has it been possible to study a planet of the ice dwarf class so precisely. To this day, they call Pluto a wonderland for science. Will Pluto possibly bring back its planet status? For a long time, scientists argued whether this midget was actually a planet. Its orbit is too eccentric. It moves much more like a part of the Kuiper Belt than in alignment with the Sun. Shortly after him, other dwarf planets were discovered. In a vote on August 23, 2006, the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, decided to withdraw the status of the planet. By then, New Horizons was already on its way to Mars. Pluto's Strange Moons Discovered in 1978, Charon is the only round Pluto moon. The moons Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx discovered in the 2000s are irregular rocks, but orbit Pluto like moons. Charon presents the researchers with further puzzles. After all, its diameter of 1,208 kilometers is slightly more than half the diameter of Pluto. And this is quite unusual for a moon. How the two large celestial bodies can orbit each other so closely and still remain on their orbits was a mystery until now. On July 14, 2015, New Horizons was able to provide razor-sharp images of Charon for the first time. Direct comparisons with Pluto became possible for the first time. The composition is similar. Both consist mainly of rock. With negative 220 degrees Celsius, it is similarly cold as on Pluto. But instead of frozen nitrogen and methane like Pluto, there seems to be volatile water ice on the surface of Charon. Surely, a sensational find in the Pluto system. In the year 2006, one considered to classify Pluto and Charon as double planets. But nothing came of it. Today, Pluto is officially an ice dwarf and Charon a satellite. Another striking feature is the almost complete absence of larger impact craters on Charon. This speaks to the rather young age of the Pluto companion. Researchers are still puzzling over how Charon was formed. The most common theory so far assumes that Pluto collided with a similarly large dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt. One part could have merged into the mass of Pluto and from another formed the Trabant Charon. This would not be unusual because there is another dwarf planet called Eris in the vicinity. Eris is hardly smaller than Pluto and was once considered the tenth planet in the solar system. The Kuiper Belt is home to many more mini-planets. Maki Maki, Haumea, and Gong Gong are just a few of them. Researchers hope to finally be able to gain more knowledge from the data obtained. But it will take decades before the data collected by New Horizons is transmitted to Earth and evaluated. Further in the Kuiper Belt, and to the bizarre object, Ultima Thule. Since autumn of 2014, the official name of the rock is Arakoth. This thing looks like two potatoes grown together in a strange formation, of which the larger Ultima and the smaller Thule are called. At the end of the solar system, the Ultima Thule Arakoth formation orbits the Sun as part of the Kuiper Belt. When New Horizons started, Arakoth hadn't even been discovered yet. After the first sighting in spring 2014, the lump immediately fascinated researchers. The object is comparatively tiny. At its longest point, Arakoth measures just 31.7 kilometers. 
What's strange is its clear orbit around the Sun. First investigations with the Hubble Space Telescope came to an astonishing result. According to this, Arakoth would have hardly changed its orbit since the beginning of the solar system. This would make it one of the most stable objects, despite its crooked shape. On January 1, 2019, New Horizons flew past the bright red Arakoth. By the time all data reaches Earth, it will probably be at the end of 2020, making Arakoth the most earthly object ever photographed and studied by a probe at close range. More interesting facts about New Horizons New Horizons is the fastest spaceship ever. New Horizons covered the distance to the moon, which took the Apollo crew three days in only nine hours. New Horizons also pays tribute to the discoverer of Pluto in a very special way. Clyde Tombaugh first saw Pluto in 1930 at the American Lowell Observatory. Tombaugh died in 1997, and New Horizons has a small amount of his ashes on board. The entire mission consumes less power than two 100-watt bulbs. Sound ecological? Mm, but it's not. In fact, New Horizons has a kind of plutonium power plant on board. That's necessary because in these far-off solar regions, solar power would be unthinkable. In this way, New Horizons is a masterpiece of engineering and navigation. Actually, unbelievable, for 3 billion miles, at about 50,000 kilometers per hour on the way, the probe has safely held its course in the outback of the solar system. It can thus safely hit a target with a diameter of 300 kilometers and collect further data. Only minimal deviations would make this precision impossible. At this distance, the control unit can still be moved from Earth to a limited extent. Thanks to the most expensive technology, New Horizons also orients itself based on the position of the Sun. New Horizons has fully lived up to its slogan to this day. The probe actually brought light to a previously unknown region of our solar system. What's more, the probe is still in the Kuiper Belt. New Horizons will continue to fly until it is either out of range or defective. If you would like to know where it is at the moment, you can find its current position here. What do you think about such space missions? Are they worth their money? Do you think that the knowledge about Pluto and the end of the solar system really helps us on Earth? Let us know your opinion, and as always, in the comment section.